The lower hut suburb of Nainai isn't seen by many as a success story. Thanks to a faltering local economy, it's faced a steady decline since the 1980s, and even Wikipedia comments on high levels of violence and criminal acts. Nainai may be down, but if Billy Graham has his way, it's far from out. The former New Zealand and Australasian light welterweight boxing champion is a force to be reckoned with, and he's changing the face of Nainai thanks to his boxing gym. Well, I was always in fights when I was a kid, and I used to win more than I lost, so I guess it's the right place to head to. But the reality is I got here because I was in so much trouble that the cops thought taking him to the boxing club is always fighting and might do him good. And I was only eight, but I loved it. I, I think growing up in Nile, I like... I was never going to go to church. My mum and dad, I loved them dearly, but they spent most of the time in the hotel. They didn't go along with religion at all. My father was dead against it because his father got saved when he was nearly 80, and they thought he was just a nutcase. But my grandfather never stopped praying for us. Everybody seemed to think I needed praying for, and that was fantastic. And then one of the guys I used to box with and play rugby league with, and he's a well-known guy in the lower hut in Nile at the time called Peter Bell. He's a butcher. We're both butchers together. And one day he says, the problem with you, Billy, he says, you haven't got the guts to face the truth. And I said, oh, I had nothing to do with the guts. I I'm not interested. You are. If you show me some guts and come to church with me one night, all right, then I will. So it's just a, you know, oh, yeah, all right, I'll go. And he, the guy that took the message, he's only halfway through it. And when he said that you're a rotten, stinking sin, I said, how does he, how does he know I'm here? <laughs> I couldn't wait to go forward and get saved. And I've never looked back. You know, I've had ups and downs in my life, but I've never ran away from what I know is to be true. I'm aiming at your head, so you better catch it, you're going to wear it. That's right. Billy is a ball of energy, and while he may not have been a professional boxer for more than 30 years now, there's no doubt that the sport runs through every fibre of his being. This is my hero when I was a kid, Floyd Patterson. Oh, yeah. That's in his house. That's upstairs in his house where he has his gym. There's, there's, he's hitting my punching bag there, and on the back of that one there, he wrote, just like this here, to Billy Graham from the heavyweight champ of the world, Olympic Games gold medalist, Floyd Patterson. And right at the bottom, good luck when you get your gym. <laughs> and then I met Joe Frazier, and I got Joe Frazier right, good luck with your gym, Joe Frazier. Amazing. Then I met Sugar Ray Leonard, and Sugar Ray Leonard, good luck with your gym. Six times world champion, Olympic Games gold medalist. This year we went to meet Muhammad Ali in America. It was unbelievable. So I took the bag with Sugar Ray Leonard and, you know, Floyd Patterson and Joe Frazier, and when I gave it to him, I said, when well, we met, we finally actually got to meet him, and I handed him the bag, I said, could you sign your name? And Lonnie, his wife, was with him, and she said, look, Ali, just, he's shaking too much, but if you leave the bag with us and trust us with the bag, you're right, and if you leave the bag with us, because we're going back to New Zealand the next day, and uh, we'll send it back to you, she said, at night we have a little wine, and he relaxes. And then he signs a few signatures at night because that's how bad condition he is. So we left it with him. Two weeks later, the bag come back with Ali's signature oh, on the bottom of it. So it's four Olympic Games gold medalists, four world champions, all encouraging me to have my gym, which is now here, which wasn't there for the first three signatures on the bag. I mean, boxing's not everyone's cup of tea. I mean, even the church that I go to, you know, there's probably 500 people in the church, and I guarantee there wouldn't have been 20 that's actually been in the gym. Yet it's a ministry. This is a ministry. And they don't see it as that, which I can understand it because, you know, it was boxing, you know. What made me set it up is when I was a little boy, was all I ever wanted to do is have a gym. It was Salvation Army home, and before that, the Japanese prisoners were in it during the war over on the Wairapa. And they brought it over here when the Salvation Army block was bought, and they had this as their games room. And then it became the food basin for the valley, or for Nana, really. People come here to get fed. We very, very fortunate enough to be able to get the premises. So we live in the church, and um, so I'm on my back in here, and I'm on my knees over there. <laughs> the young men who come to Billy's gym find they're learning far more than just how to land a left hook. One night I had all the boys sitting down here, and I said, OK, guys, put your hand up if you, if you like Superman. So every flaming hand went up. And I said, good, we all like heroes, don't we? Who wants to be someone's hero? Who would like to say, those young boys look up to me? Well, there's boys in this gym that's, that's already happening. You look up to Latu and David and Jared, and you look up to them. And one day those little guys, they're going to look up to you. You know, these kids want to be heroes. In order to do that, they're going to learn to control their mouth, control their eyes, control their feet where they are, you know. And, um, and that's not always easy. Anyone can stuff up. You only have to make one little blue, mate, and people forget what you did. On the wall of the gym, and in a booklet that every gym member gets given, and underlining everything that Billy does with the boys, 
are old-fashioned values which he expects and gets from them. The wisest man in the world was King Solomon, and he said, if you love your children, discipline them. Well, we've taken discipline away. So is it wonder our jails are full? Is it wonder that every day of the flame of wheat, people are ringing us up and saying, our kids are out of control, they've got a filthy mouth, they're arguing, they're hitting their younger brother, they're bullying, uh, they're kicked out of school, they're smoking dope, they're downloading porn, and this is just normal now. The boys in these having an argument aren't just the boys with a filthy mouth. Some of these girls have got a mouth like a septic tank. So all of a sudden we're saying, is this permissible, or are we just going to ignore it? Well, we can say, you know, um, Aristotle, 2,000 years, I can't spell his name either, but mate, 2,000 years ago he knew the news because he was reading it like it's out of our paper. What's wrong with kids today? They've got bad mouths on them. Well, he'd get a shock if he's walking around today. There's no respect for anyone anymore. And you can get away with sheer murder. But does it work? Mark Gordon is a local youth worker. We can't force people to, to come to know Christ. Ne never want to do that. But God works through believers in people's hearts and, uh, and it's, it's happening here. I mean, God in the Old Testament, uh, it was always, if, if, you, if you've gone astray, the answer was always repent and go back. Go back to the simple commands that I commanded you. Uh, you know, children, obey your parents. That's a very simple command that has just amazing ramifications. It helps them. You know, God's not silly. He knows the families, the, the place where you learn all of those things. And that's setting them up for future, every relationship, every avenue of work. And because it's broken down, we see, we, we see breakdowns. Uh, so, I mean, Billy, Billy has mastered the art of, you know, the common sense. But I think he got it from God, who's had it in the, in the Word of God for thousands good of boy, years. If anyone knows whether Billy's methods are making a difference, it's the police. Community Constable Russ Calavati. We've got uh, a high proportion of youth living in Nana, come, uh, out of the youth in Lower Hutt, um, and a higher proportion of youth live in Lower Hutt um, than in Wellington. Um, so we, uh, the difference he makes is that he's taken in kids that, are, that would otherwise be on the street or um, at home, have nothing to do, um, obviously you've got nothing to do, idle hands, then what's the next best thing they're looking for is entertainment. If you can't afford entertainment, what do you do? You go out and make your own entertainment. And quite often it's the wrong type of entertainment. So we're talking about um, crime, uh, burglaries, willful damage, the tagging, um, violence, things like that. So, Ten years ago, uh, you, in Nainai, there was, um, there was a lot of disrespect. Um, there's a lot of truancy. Uh, youth crime was higher. Um, now, um, with Billy's gym and the work that he's doing, yeah, we've seen a huge change. Um, kids seem a lot more relaxed, a lot more confident, um, and not so aggressive. So, yeah, the work he's doing is just fantastic. And we just wish that he was, was bigger and um, able to take on more of the youth. So. That I'm very careful who I get to surround myself with. We, we don't take clowns on. We've got good people. We've got a good trust. We've got good people helping to coach. We've got good. We've picked some good mothers out. We've got some good fathers out here, and they help us, you know. And as I mentioned before, we've got a young fella coming next door that's a youth worker, and he'll be involved with the youth in the, in the area, and hopefully get the opportunity to talk to him, you know. And um, we, if I haven't got the knowledge, you know, I'm, I haven't got the master of everything. I ring up, help me, help me, help me, you know, and I get help. And um, an idiot's a person who knows he needs help and doesn't go looking for it. But I, I ring around very quickly. Ah, yeah. Roger, you guys are up the trap. Someone's doing one bit together. Someone's doing behind your back. Someone's doing in front of your back. My man used to smack me in the bum if I didn't say please and thank you. And he was a tough old rooster, but he knew what manners were. And if you went into any job anywhere with a smiling face on you and you had manners, you were way in front of some of these smart twerps that have got a degree and can get in but can't stay there because no one wants to work with them, you know? So yeah, you can duplicate what we're doing. We're duplicating manners, old value stuff. I like undercover agents. I like people in here with a good mouth. There's a couple of boys that come here that are never gonna box. They're too old to be boxing. They don't know that, but I do. <laughs> and I said, just come in, just come in and be an undercover agent. That means your mouth's good. You're caring about the kids. You're a nice guy. And these guys, it's good to see young 
boys look up to young men with good mouths on them that don't have to get plastered to enjoy a night out, you know. So we create that atmosphere, you know. Well, it, it, it's, uh, it's tough today for the church to, uh, you know, evangelism is very different. Um, uh, you know, how, how far do you go? How bold are you allowed to be? We, we go to high schools, you're not allowed to share anything. It's just the world we live in. Uh, and uh, Billy certainly hasn't started the gym to, you know, as a sort of undercover uh, for the gospel. He, he's, a, he's, a, he's a boxer, that's what he loves, and he's doing a great job. Um, but uh, he does know as, as well as, as, uh, as I do that, you know, to really change, you need to, to know your creator. You need to know the Lord. And so you've got to be self-correcting yourself. You've got to be honest. You've got to look at all the cliches, look at the man in the mirror. Well, sometimes I didn't really want to look at the man in the mirror. And I think most of us can say that. And um, in order to be the best you can be, I'm saying, I say to these kids, you know, that um, the boys do what they want to do, men do what they have to do. And what does that mean, the boys say? You know, well, what do you mean, Billy? And I said, it means that you know what's right, you do what you know is right. When you get out of bed, make the flaming thing. When you break it, fix it. When you drop it, pick it up. You know, if mum's tired, we'll make a blooming breakfast and make a lunch. Simple stuff. Well, we're getting the mothers coming saying, what have you done to my kid? <laughs> he made his bed. <laughs> I said, was he still in it? <laughs> he pulled it up, you know. But no, the kids are changing. Some of these kids are going out of the way to work in with us. So it is exciting, you know. It's exciting. It's the most exciting thing I've ever done. I've done a few exciting things. <laughs> <laughs>